Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay Huang. Today we are going to use Kurt's notes to talk about colorectal cancer. Before we begin, if you already haven't, please check out Kurt's notes website. You can learn about Dr. Schaberg. You can take some quizzes and he has his famous Kurt's notes. Recently, there's been an article on the impact Kurt's notes has had on pathology residents. I would highly recommend reading the article if you have time. Without further ado, let's talk about colorectal carcinoma. Adenocarcinoma, not otherwise specified, or NOS. This has classical intestinal morphology, where you'll have architectural complexity, including cribriform growth, as you can see here, and abundant, dirty necrosis. Most arise through the adenoma to carcinoma sequence. It's the third most common cancer in America. It's associated with processed food, obesity, red meat, low fiber diet, and alcohol. In cytopathology, your classic finding for colorectal cancer metastasis is picket fence with abundant necrosis. There are a couple of subtypes of colorectal cancers. Although most colorectal cancers are not otherwise specified or NOS, some subtypes exist, many of which have distinct morphology, clinical implications, and molecular alteration. Mucinous adenocarcinoma, where greater than 50% of tumor is composed of pools of extracellular mucin. This is the most common subtype. No prognosis implications. It's enriched for microsatellite instability or MSI high tumors. If less than 50%, you can add mucinous features or mucinous component, but not you can't say mucinous adenocarcinoma. Signet ring carcinoma. Greater than 50% of tumor cells have prominent intracytoplasmic mucin displacing the nucleus. It's associated with a worse outcome and associated with Lynch syndrome and MSI high. Medullary carcinoma, sheets of malignant cells with vesicular nuclei, prominent nucleoli, abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, and a prominent inflammatory infiltrate. You'll have BRAF mutations leading to MSI high. It's better prognosis. CK20 and CDX2 can be negative slash positive. Serrated adenocarcinoma, morphologically similar to serrated polyps. Micropapillary adenocarcinoma. You'll have small clusters of tumor cells with stromal retraction. It's a worse outcome, like in all organs like the breast, with early metastasis to lymph node. Adenoma-like adenocarcinoma. You'll have pushing invasion with minimal desmoplasia. It's hard to diagnose on biopsy. It has a good prognosis. And adenosquamous carcinoma. Grading for NOS colorectal cancers. This is based on gland formation in the least differentiated component. Don't include areas of tumor budding or poorly differentiated clusters, and we'll mention what those are later on. So for low grade, that includes well differentiated and moderately differentiated, and high grade, poorly differentiated. Well grade is greater than 95% gland formation. Moderately differentiated includes 50 to 95% gland formation and poorly differentiated is less than 50%. Special data to report. You want to report large venous invasion. This is when tumor is involving endothelium lined spaces with an identifiable smooth muscle layer or elastic lamina. Extramural venous invasion, this is outside muscularis propria, is a risk factor for liver metastasis. Here you'll see the tumor filling the large vein, it's destroying the lumen, and you have this orphan artery without its paired vein, which is a hint for large venous invasion. In addition to the orphan artery, another hint is a large rounded tongue of tumor next to it. Here is the EVG stain, which highlights the internal elastic lamina of both the artery and vein. If you don't see large venous invasion easily on H&E, you can consider getting an EVG to look for it. Um, Dr. Schaberg gets at least two blocks to exclude large venous invasion. Tumor budding. This is single cells or small clusters of less than five cells at the advancing front of the tumor. High tumor budding is a significant risk factor for nodal involvement slash poor outcome. It represents epithelial mesenchymal transition and you want to count in the hotspot. 
poorly differentiated clusters. Th these are clusters of greater than or equal to five cells without gland formation. It's associated with worse outcome. Lymph node metastasis. You must have residual lymphoid tissue and usually has a rounded contour. Tumor deposits. This is a tumor focus in the fat, but without identifiable lymph node tissue, nerve, or vascular structure. It's staged as PN1C. Often, you have irregular contours. If you see unpaired artery or elastic lamina, then it's large venous invasion, not tumor deposit. Staging. PT0 is no evidence of primary tumor. PTIS is carcinoma in situ, high-grade dysplasia. Uh, it could be intramucosal carcinoma, where it's involvement of lamina propria with no extension through the muscularis mucosae because that's, uh, you have few lymphatics and so there's a low risk of metastasis. PT1 tumor invades the submucosa through the muscularis mucosa, but not into the muscularis propria. It usually elicits a desmoplastic response, which can be a hint. PT2 tumor invades the muscularis propria. PT3 tumor invades through the muscularis propria into pericoplorectal tissues. PT4A, tumor invades through the visceral peritoneum, including gross perforation of the bowel through tumor and continuous invasion of tumor through areas of inflammation to the surface of the visceral peritoneum. And Dr. Schaberich has an example a little bit below. PT4B, tumor directly invades or adheres to adjacent organs or structures. In this picture, you see the colorectal cancer, you see the inflammation, and you see the mesothelial surface. In reference to PT4A, even though the tumor isn't at the surface, because it is continuous with the surface through inflammation, it is PT4A. The significance of tumors that are less than one millimeter, but not quite at the surface is unclear, with some, but not all studies, indicating a higher risk of peritoneal recurrence. When in doubt, get levels and more sections because your best stain is levels. Pseudo invasion, usually no to little cytologic or architectural atypia. You have inflamed fibrotic stroma, hemosiderin laden macrophages, glands accompanied by lamina propria. It'll be rounded, well circumscribed, and mostly left colon. True invasion. You'll have, in contrast, cytologic or architectural atypia with this cribriforming you can see here, desmoplastic stroma, infiltrative irregular growth, not accompanied by lamina propria, and anywhere in colon. Malignant polyps. These are adenomas containing invasive adenocarcinoma that extends through the muscularis mucosa into the submucosa. Carcinoma in situ and intramucosal carcinoma are excluded as there is minimal metastatic risk. Polypectomy and local excisions like endoscopic submucosal dissection or ESD for early colorectal cancer may suffice as the definitive treatment of early colorectal carcinoma, PT1 tumors. Proper assessment of the specimens is needed to assess the risk of residual carcinoma and adverse outcomes, nodal or distant metastasis. High risk findings for which additional therapy, likely at least colectomy is necessary to get lymph nodes, includes high grade carcinoma, tumor less than one millimeter from resection margin, lymphatic venous invasion, high grade tumor budding, deep submucosal invasion, usually greater than two millimeters, and broad invasion, greater than four millimeters. Mismatch repair enzyme testing. This is universal screening of all new colorectal cancers. Do immunohistochemistry first, and then you can also do MSI testing by PCR. You're looking for loss of staining. Normal is intact staining of all four MMR enzymes. Your MMRs include MSH2, MSH6, MLH1, and PMS2. So MMR intact, then it's probably not Lynch and more sporadic. MSH2, MSH6, or PMS2 deficient, probably Lynch, then get your germline testing. MLH1 deficient with PMS2, get your BRAF testing. If there's BRAF mutation, it's sporadic. If there's no BRAF, then get your MLH1 methylation testing. And if there is methylation, it's sporadic, but if there is no methylation, it's probably Lynch. Potential pitfalls include decrease in MSH6 expression after chemotherapy. So if that's the case, consider testing the pre-treatment biopsy block. Lynch-related colorectal cancer is more often right-sided and arises from adenomas. Compared to sporadic tumors, 
MMR deficient tumors that come from sessile serrated polyps adenomas are associated with BRAF B600E mutations and then MLH1 promoter hypermethylation and MLH1 loss of expression. Here is an example of intact MMR staining and loss of staining. Some molecular, around 85% of colorectal cancers arise from the chromosomal instability pathway or the non-hypermutated pathway. You'll have adenoma, dysplasia, and then carcinoma. You'll have large chromosome arm gains and losses. Common mutations include APC, that's early on in the process and then starts to form an adenoma. And over time, it activates the WENT pathway, KRAS, and P53. RAS mutations are approximately 50% of tumors in this category, and it's resistant to anti-EGFR therapy, which is used to treat metastatic colorectal cancer. Microsatellite instability MSI pathway, the hypermutated pathway, approximately 15% of colorectal cancers. You can have the sporadic, where you have BRAF mutation, MLH1 promoter hypermethylation, inactivation of mismatch repair enzymes, serrated polyp carcinoma. Lynch associated, you have germline mutations in MMR proteins, loss of heterozygosity, adenoma, carcinoma. You'll have lots of mutations. It's more immunogenic, more inflammatory response to tumor, better outcome, also response to checkpoint inhibitors, like your anti pdl one Ultra mutated pathway, this accounts for approximately 3% of colorectal cancers. You'll have a poly or DNA replication enzyme mutation. You have lots of mistakes with DNA replication leading to ultra mutated tumor. It's better prognosis and response to anti pdl one Rectal cancers. Rectal cancers are unique among colon cancers in that they are often treated preoperatively with chemoradiation unless they are very early. The quality of the surgical technique, like your LAR or low anterior resection or APR, your abdominal perineal resection, is a key determinant of local recurrence and long-term survival. Grossly, it, you assess the completeness of the non-peritonealized mesorectal excision, and you score according to worst area. Complete means intact, bulky mesorectum with a smooth surface, as you can see here. There's no visible muscle, only very minor irregularities, less than five millimeters. No coning, where the specimen tapers dramatically distally as you can see here. Nearly complete, this is moderately bulky mesorectum. You have minor irregularities, greater than five millimeters, but no visible mucosa. Incomplete, this is little bulk to the mesorectum. You'll have irregular surface. The muscularis propria is visible. And as you can see here in this picture, you can see the coning and visible muscle. Circumferential non-peritonealized resection margin it's considered positive if the tumor is microscopically less than or equal to one millimeter from inked circumferential margin, as there is a high risk of recurrence. Dr. Schaberg has this chart comparing complete, nearly complete, and incomplete resection and here for your review. Thank you. Now we're going to do rapid review. Colorectal cancer, adenocarcinoma, NOS, you have architectural complexity and dirty necrosis. Most are NOS, but there are some subtypes. Mucinous adenocarcinoma, greater than 50% of tumor composed of pools of extracellular mucin, most common subtype. Signet ring carcinoma, greater than 50% of tumor cells have prominent intracytoplasmic mucin. Medullary carcinoma, serrated adenocarcinoma, micropapillary adenocarcinoma, adenoma-like adenocarcinoma, and adenosquamous carcinoma. Grading for NOS cancers, you have low and high grade. Low grade includes well diff and moderately diff, and well diff has greater than 95% gland formation. Mod, mod diff has 50, 50 to 95% gland formation. Poorly diff has less than 50% gland formation. Special data to report, large venous invasion, where the tumor involves the endothelium line spaces with an identifiable smooth muscle layer or elastic lamina. Extramural venous invasion, which is outside muscularis propria, is a risk factor for liver mets. Look for signs of an orphan artery and tongue of tumor. Tumor budding, single cells or small clusters of less than five cells at the advancing front of the tumor. Poorly differentiated clusters, clusters of greater than or equal to five cells without gland formation. Lymph node mets must have residual lymphoid tissue. If not, consider tumor deposit where 
It's a tumor focused in the fat, but without identifiable lymph node, tissue, nerve, or vascular structure, staged as PN1C. Staging criteria, PT3, tumor invades through the muscularis propria. T4A, tumor invades through the visceral peritoneum, including gross perforation of the bowel through tumor and continuous invasion of tumor through areas of inflammation to the surface of the visceral peritoneum. PT4B, tumor di directly invades or adheres to adjacent organs or structures. You can have pseudo-invasion, no to little atypia, hemocytorin-laden macrophages, lamin-appropriate accompaniment, rounded, well-circumscribed, mostly left colon, true invasion, atypia, desmoplastic stroma, infiltrative irregular growth anywhere in colon. Malignant polyps, look for your high-risk findings, including high-grade carcinoma, tumor less than one millimeter from resection margin, lymphatic venous invasion, high-grade tumor budding, deep submucosal invasion, usually greater than two millimeters, and broad invasion, greater than four millimeters. Mismatch repair enzymes, it's a universal screening of all new colorectal cancers. Molecular pathways, we have your chromosomal instability pathways, the non-hypermutated pathways, approximately 85% of colorectal cancers, and then your microsatellite instability pathway or the hypermutated pathway, which accounts for 15%. It can be sporadic or Lynch associated. And then ultra mutated pathway, 3% of colorectal cancers, better prognosis. Rectal carcinomas, you want to grossly assess your non-peritonalized mesorectal excision at the worst area. It can be complete, nearly complete, incomplete. It can be complete where you'll have a bulky mesorectum with smooth surface, nearly complete, minor irregularities, but no visible muscle. Incomplete where you have coning and muscularis propria is visible and little bulk to mesorectum. Circumferential non-peritonealized resection margin Tumor is positive if it's less than or equal to one millimeter from inked circumferential margin. Well, thank you so much. And we'll see you on our next episode of Pathagonia. And as always, thank you to Dr. Shaberg for his excellent educational notes.